it looks like we have FL Studio 2024 now, which is very random. I was not expecting an update. The first thing that I noticed, you open it, boom, and then you get this welcome to FL Studio. And it has your old projects here, like your recent projects on this side. And then on this side, you have all these templates. But uh, that's the first new thing that I noticed was the welcome screen. Then there's the FL Cloud stuff, but apparently the free version has 10 free plugins that you can use. So I really wanna try those out. There's a trial version here that you can start. Even when the trial is done, the free version comes with 10 free plugins. So I think I gotta go to options, tools, FL Cloud plugins. So now we have this little app that has plugins that are now available. So that's another thing that's new is the FL Cloud plugins. And then there's also a new synth. It's called the Kepler XO. This new plugin is only for the all plugins bundle. Uh, but this is nice. It's very like a, it's a very like retro synth, more for like synth wave or like cyberpunk style type of music. Yeah, there's that. There's also Chord Generator, which was already a part of the scripts in FL Studio, but I guess they just incorporated it more into the piano roll now. So now if I go in here into the piano roll, go up here, Tools, Generate Chord Progression. So basically this just creates chord progressions for you using AI. Where do I select the key? Edit, there it is. Okay, so you right click here edit you can choose the key i'm gonna do c so now we have chords all right so that was the chord generator it's nice it's helpful it's quick if you aren't very familiar with music theory and stuff like that especially for beginners i think it would be really helpful let me add a bass So this sub now, there's a new plugin called Low Lifter. It's supposed to add more harmonics. Harmonics, pre-gain, boost the lower frequencies before they are shaped. Multiband, change between signal band and multi-band harmonics processing. To me, what this kind of feels like it's doing is pretty much what you can do in Wave Shaper and in Maximus. Basically, it's doing just only affecting the lows. And it feels like this slope is this slope right here. And if I move this to the left, which is this one right here, if I move it to the left, it makes it louder. So like, if I move this to the left, it's like adding more harmonics. And if I do it this way, it's kind of squishing them, right? So like same thing here, if I move this this way, it's basically like an exciter, or if I move this this way, it compresses it. So it feels like that's kind of what's happening in that uh, low lifter, a little more controlled of course, but it feels like that's kind of what it is. Uh, or it's the same thing as the wave shaper. If I move this this way, that's more harmonics, more distortion. It, it makes it louder, but if I move it this way, it makes it quieter. So. I feel like that's basically all that's happening here. You just have a little more control over it as far as like, you know, the crossover, uh, where you want that to happen. And uh, yeah. And then there's also a stereo width plugin spreader, which is supposed to make things wide without causing phase issues in mono. So it keeps your signal sounding the same, and it just makes it wider. Oh yeah, that definitely spreads it. 
and there's separation, which kind of merges the left and the right together or spreads them apart. And then there's low pass so that you can uh, make sure that you're not getting any stereo separation in your low end. But this is really nice. This one is probably my favorite thing about the update. It's basically like the the Ozone Imager. It's very similar to this as well. They also have this cool feature now, note repeats. So if I add, for example, let's do something like flex. So now in, in here you have something called note repeat, which will repeat the notes. As you can see here, it starts dividing them. It's mostly meant for like beats when you're making beats and doing like, you know, hat rolls and stuff like that. And the higher you go, the more it divides it. little hint panel it'll show you 1 16th 1 8th you can do it here or you can do it in here in the control what else was new in edison you have stem separation but only for vocals so you go here vocal denoise isolator it analyzes it and then you can choose to solo the vocals or the sound that's in the background Sharing my love so real. if you put it all the way that's where you get the just the completely isolated or I guess you can have a little bit of the noise in there. So then that means if I turn it all the way, it completely takes out the vocal. So yeah, this is really nice. Uh, honestly, this one's a really nice feature because you don't have to do the whole stem separation in the, in the playlist now. You can just do it here in Edison really quick. The browser has been updated to preview samples with pitch and time stretching applied if the sample has BPM and key information. Let me go into the FL packs. That's cool, it syncs it. They also, I mean, obviously they changed the name. Apparently the reason for the name change, because before it was FL Studio 21 and they just went into FL Studio 24 basically, uh, is because they're doing it more like year based now instead of 21.2.3 or 21.6. Uh, they're just going to go by the year. So basically it's just going to be FL 24 and then next year FL 25 and then, then the year after that FL 26. So I'm guessing they're going to do an update every year. Uh, but yeah, now it's just going to be kept as FL 24, FL 25, FL 26. There's also a change that they did to the EQ. It's very subtle. They have now HQ plus which is supposed to be decramped. I'm not really sure what that means. Parametric EQ2. We've added a new HQ mode that features decramped filters without oversampling. This mode does not introduce the phase shift legacy oversampling has or the one millisecond plugin latency from enhanced oversampling. Uh, basically, it doesn't create phasing or latency. Oh, now there's a make unique shortcut. So instead of going in here and putting make unique, you can put, I believe it's, I believe it's shift V. So you grab it, shift V and you move it over and now it makes it unique. So it makes it a completely new pattern. Uh, I think one of the downsides to this though is that if I put shift V and I click on it, it makes it unique, but it's stacked on top of the other one. I would have to drag it out, delete this and then put it in. So that's cool, I guess, uh, for when you're arranging and you and you want to do that a little faster. I mean, I guess the, the just the other thing is just these plugins, these new plugins from uh, from the cloud. So you go to tools, plugins, and it opens up the app. Which ones are going to be free? That's the thing. Which fl cloud plugins are free okay there you go so these are all the free ones that you get let's let's test out the free ones we got ignition keys ignition keys there it is get code oh god free native instruments plugins ignition keys is installed via native access copy your serial number to the clipboard using the button below add it to your account in native access to download and authenticate the plugin 
you know what? We're gonna skip that because I'm not trying to go through all of that. That's that's annoying. Okay, so that's ignition keys by Native Instruments. Ozone elements. I think I, that's also gonna ask me for a fucking code. I'm pretty sure. Ozone elements. Get code. Let's see what else. Super VHS. Super VHS. Install. To get this free plugin, please accept the terms and conditions. Nothing in life is free. So that's Super VHS. UVI Workstation. UVI Workstation. Let's install that. Okay, we got UVI Workstation. Didn't have any weird thing that I needed to do. Model D by UVI. Model D by UVI. Install it. M Vibrato MB. M Vibrato. Install. There it is. And a heat. Two, which sounds like some type of saturation plugin. There it is. Install. Then we have combustor. Install. And then there's fire presser. There it is. Install. And mirror by United Plugins. There it is. Mirror. Install. Okay, well these are downloading. And that's it. Those are the 10 free plugins. You know what? Let me let me download native instruments thing that they asked me about. Setting up native access. Installing dependencies. Welcome to native access. Please log in to continue. I just want to get all these installed so that I can put them to use, baby. Loading products. Loading. Loading native access products. Loading pro lo uh, product. Loading. Loading native act. Loading native access. Loading. For now, I think I've installed all the other ones. So now look, let's try the instruments first. Insert FL Cloud, Model D, and UVI Workstation. Let's see what Model D is. I think it's a piano uh, emulation. That's nice. That's a nice piano. Basic dry. Loading program. This one has, I guess, some reverb on it, but it's the exact same sound. Loading program. We got Mellow Dark. That's nice. I like that one. Loading program. Oh, this one's phasing. It's basically all the same sound. I guess it just has some of these effects on them. Loading program. Why does it do that every time? That's so frustrating. It's going to do it every single time. Loading program. Loading. Uh, and then we also have workstation, which I think is... What is it? There's nothing on here. Bro. Loading products. Still can't load. Lo loading. We, we, we cannot access your account. Loading. I don't know what workstation is. Can I use like, like samples? Ooh. Okay. Okay. Stretch. Oh, that's sick. Damn, can I automate that? Can that be automated? No. Oh, man. That would be super cool to automate. I mean, I guess what I could also do is link it to the mixer and then add Edison and just record it in. Drag and drop. Does that mean I can drag and drop it directly into the playlist from here? Is that what it's telling me? Oh man, that's nice. I like that. I like that a lot. So if I can go in here, delay. So there's delay, then there's reverbs. Okay, then we have modulation. We have chorus, flanger, phaser, cross phaser, analog chorus, analog. Loading products. I'm going to close that out and open it again. Maybe it'll work if I do that. Loading product. Oh, there it is. We'll do it right now. Let's keep messing with this for a little bit. Uh, there's filters. There's EQing. Stereo amplitude. We have auto pan. Drive and distortion. Dynamics. We have compression stuff. Three band processors. And then random stuff. Well, that's cool. I like overall this the stretching thing. Like, let me take some samples that I've made. 
throw that in there. That with some reverb and some delay, like if I link that into the mixer. <laughs> and then what's this ARP feature? Whoa. Wow, so you can do some really cool editing of samples in here. Out of all of the plugins, this is one of my favorite ones right here. So we have Combustor, which sounds like a compressor. So we bring this down. It has a sidechain option. That might be nice to do with a kick. I like doing really crazy compression like this because you, then you're able to hear what it's doing. Oh, there's saturation. What is this? Oh, there's different modes. A, B, C, D, E. Five different modes of saturation. So I have the kick. I'm going to sidechain it to here and then I'm gonna open this up uh, do I have to do it in here processing sidechain base let's go in here there it is you can see the compression well that's cool that's another option for uh, instead of using the FL the fruity limiter I can use this combustor to do sidechaining now but in order to select the sidechain, you got to go into the settings here, into processing, and then under the sidechain here, then you just right click and you select your sidechain input. And then you just go back and make sure to turn this on. So when it's turned off, it's just going to do regular compression. All right, let's try another plugin here. Go to FL Cloud, the Fire Presser. Fire Presser, $106. Well, I'm glad we have it for free in FL Studio. But what is it? A secret trick to get natural yet powerful sounding compression is to use multiple compressors in series. That's what I thought. I guess so it's multiple compressors. Yeah, this, this sounds like it would be really nice in like drums. I feel like that's kind of what it is more for. Some of them have like a longer release time. Some of them have a shorter release time shorter attack time so we tried the combustor <laughs> that's a funny name <laughs> uh the fire presser which is a compressor the heat 2 which sounds ooh did that introduce some latency i don't know if i like that what is this no you cannot have access to my cookies damn 50 bucks well we get it for free in fl studio but what is it the original twin distortion powerhouse so it's two distortions and you blend them together okay got it that's all i needed to know so basically you have two different distortions a b c d e f g h i j so there's all the way to j different modes of uh distortion so you can try different modes on each that's cool. I don't like the latency though. I don't like the latency on that. It, it, it like introduces a little bit of latency. Let's see what else we got. Heat 2, we got mirror. Whoa. Okay, this one introduces insane delay, bro. Okay, so if I click this button that says negative, I, I no longer have latency. I don't know what that means though. Is there a page that I can visit here? Let's go to their website. Uh, Mirror, $74, but we get it for free. Hey. Mirror needs time to record your audio into the buffer before reversing it and playing it back before your original sound. This causes latency, which means that playback will not immediately start. Please be patient and give Mirror time to work its magic. In the long run, it will save you lots of time over the tedious manual process. Got it. So they, they're aware of the latency. 
I don't know what that negative button does. Don't be negative. You can optionally turn off the negative delay that uses latency compensation to play the wet audio before the dry. It allows mirror to also be used as a standard reverse delay where the wet audio plays after the dry. This mode incurs no latency, therefore it is not subject to any DAW latency limitations and can be played live. But what is it that it's doing really? Mirror is reverse negative delay, which means the reverse effect is heard before the original no sound. This is achieved by reporting a fake latency to the DAW, which then compensates perfectly aligning the end of the effect with the start of your original sound. Interesting. So without the latency, it's just a regular reversed delay. Okay, let's do it a little faster. That's still pretty cool. I still don't fully understand what it's doing. Huh, well that one's that one's interesting. Uh, I'll have to read up on it a little bit more and see kind of how to really work it. Then we have M Vibrato. Yeah, probably with like a vocal. Whoa, this one has latency. So, so far, that's kind of some of the problems with some of these plugins is they have latency. Like the distortion one had some latency. This one has latency on the very end. These other ones were fine. Uh, and then that mirror one has that latency. Let's see the last one, Super VHS, which I'm guessing is kind of like a tape. Oh, did this one have latency? Oh, I like that. Oh, I guess this is some kind of either saturation or a mix of uh, compression and saturation. Which I guess is kind of like a bit crushing type of effect. Or like a ring modulation. And then static. Well, there you go. I went over pretty much all the free ones. Uh, there's a lot more. These were just the 10, the 10 free ones that you get. Actually, uh, I'm missing two. I'm missing the ones by Native Instruments. Ignition keys. What was the other one? There was another one. There was uh, elements, ozone elements 11. Ignition keys requires at least contact version 7.6 to run. I guess I have to install contact. Okay, let's install both, I guess. Installing Ozone 11. Let's see, available. I should have this available now. It's still showing me good code. Let me close that and then open it again. Authenticating, authenticating, loading, plugins. Okay, now we go here. It's still showing me good code. The other one came up though. FL Cloud, Ozone Standard, there it is. Okay, this has a lot of latency. Where can I turn it off? Test, test, test. Okay, there you go. It was one of those Ozone 11 elements. Let me... I think this is more for mastering, isn't it? That's usually what I hear Ozone is used for. Um, So we got EQ, Dynamics, Equalizers, Exciters, Imager, Master Rebalance, Match EQ, Maximizer, Stabilizer, Compressors, EQ, Limiter, and Tape. So yeah, this is more so for mastering. I don't really need this, I guess, just because I have my own process for mastering, but it would be cool to use it. This uh, Imager... Is really nice though. I know that, that that ozone makes a really nice imager. I have it separately, ozone imager too, and it's really nice. But now that FL Studio has its own imager, I'm just gonna use this instead because it actually is really good. That's pretty much it. I mean, it's all these plugins, combustor, fire, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the ones from here, eight, nine, and then 10 is the one that's that I'm having problems with installing, which is just like a piano, a bunch of different piano presets in contact basically. But yeah, I think overall, what I really enjoyed the most would be Workstation. UVI Workstation is really, really nice. All right, let's mess a little more with that uh, Workstation. 
and I'm gonna create random samples. I'll use that other instrument, the Model D, to create a little melody or something. Mm -hmm. 